Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about machine forecasting. Machine forecasting refers to the use of artifacts to forecast future events. I've spent a while thinking about the automating of forecasting recently, and in this video I will step back and attempt to give a brief overview of the field and a discussion of its significance. The human brain spends a lot of its time predicting the future consequences of its possible actions. Many machine intelligences consist of a prediction component, an evaluation function, and tree pruning heuristics. The prediction component is used to understand the long-term consequences of actions, the evaluation function says how desirable possible future states are, and the tree pruning heuristics are there to help narrow down the search space. And my main thesis here will be that machine forecasting is a problem that's likely to be solved before we have full machine intelligence. Machine forecasting is equivalent to the problem of predicting discrete sequences, since sensory input channels can be digitized and then serialized. Also, forecasting the far future is equivalent to predicting the probability density function associated with the very next symbol in the sensory input stream, since if you can do that, you can iterate the process to make a weighted tree of predictions that reaches out into the more distant future. Sequence prediction is equivalent to stream compression. The close link between sequence prediction and stream compression is not obvious to everyone, so briefly, both problems require the construction of a model of the stream. For a prediction engine, the model is used to predict what symbol will come next, and for a compressor, the same prediction is made, and then the probabilities of the actual symbol observed are converted into output bits using an arithmetic coding scheme or similar. In practice, there are sometimes a few minor differences associated with these two application domains, but nothing to write home about, and the two problems are essentially one problem wearing two different outfits. That compression and machine intelligence are so closely linked seems to me to be one of the most important theoretical breakthroughs in the field in the last decade. The idea has been most prominently championed by Marcus Hutter. Marcus sponsored a compression prize in 2006 to help drive forwards research in the area. The significance of the work relating to compression to machine intelligence is high for several reasons. It allows an easy way of measuring progress, an area which has been explored by Shane Legg. Also, it successfully breaks a challenging problem down into subcomponents, often an important step on the way to solving the problem. And lastly, but perhaps most significantly, developing good quality stream compressors looks as though it's an easier problem than machine intelligence, and it's one which immediately suggests a variety of possible ways to solve it. What could you do with a high quality stream compressor? Many of those working in the area appear to argue that compression is equivalent to machine intelligence. When pressed for details, they often say that a powerful sequence prediction engine would allow machines to pass the Turing test if they were given sufficient relevant training data. It seems to be true that, if a sufficiently powerful predictor watched enough Turing tests take place and was then given a partial transcript, then it might well be able to do a convincing job of predicting which reply was most likely to come next. However, this approach doesn't help very much with something like soundly beating a 9 down Go player, since then there are not any agents with sufficiently superior intellects available to get relevant training data from. So, it seems as though predictors can copy and imitate, but are less adept at imi innovation. They could imitate a human, but perhaps not pass themselves off as a superintelligence. And possibly there are ways of making such a machine think that a superintelligence exists, and then get it wondering about what actions the superintelligence might take, but this gets us into rather contrived territory. So machine forecasting isn't quite the same thing as full engineered machine intelligence. Of course, in order to predict the actions of any intelligent agents it observes in its environment, a competent forecaster necessarily has to model them in considerable detail, thereby developing a model of acting intelligently. So, forecasting is close to advanced machine intelligence, but it isn't exactly the same thing. To my eyes, a forecasting agent seems rather like a machine intelligence, with its main evaluation and tree pruning circuitry stripped out, and a much reduced set of actuators. Since practically any intelligent agent needs to consider the future consequences of, of its actions, that makes forecasting a subset of almost any machine intelligence project. As with almost any modular construction, usually individual components are constructed before they are assembled. Forecasting has sufficiently many real-world applications for its development to be well-funded. Predicting stock market prices is perhaps the most obvious application. Google has discovered that it would like to know your search query before you type most of it in. There are many other applications, and they will provide an economic impetus to, to developing such systems, allowing their successes to catalyze their future development. Compression is a problem where we have mountains of training data. If a reinforcement learning paradigm is used, the reward is simple to calculate and can be applied very rapidly. 
Also, there are no mechanical robots or humans in the loop, which is good since such components tend to slow things down. Finally, which evaluation function to use for full machine intelligence projects is a difficult and controversial area, and tree pruning can quickly get messy. However, general purpose data compression is pretty much a pure math problem. It is, at the very least, a traditional computer science problem. I think about the only other likely path to machine intelligence involves automated programming. In automated or inductive programming, computer programs write other computer programs from specifications in high-level languages. Automated programming has potentially greater autocatalytic potential compared to forecasting. It closes up the build-test cycle, cutting out human programmers from the loop, potentially resulting in much improved efficiency. However, progress in the field looks relatively slow to me. The associated autocatalytic process might not start to snowball terribly early on, and I don't think that the whole field has much chance of beating an approach that aims directly at a forecasting agent. Possibly the two fields might mutually catalyse each other. This, then, is the case for machine forecasting coming first. Once we have machine forecasting, machine intelligence will probably follow relatively quickly. It does seem likely to me that we will get machine forecasting first. However, I note that only a few individuals seem to be currently engaged in the area. In my humble opinion, the approach seems so promising that many of those interested in machine intel intelligence should seriously consider either aiming for such an agent or considering how to deal with the consequences of one being produced. Um, enjoy!